Mr. Aiden, we up on the live stream? Good to go. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to see you guys this morning. Good to see you this morning. If you don't have one of these announcement sheets, get one. Uh, for those of you that were here yesterday for the, uh, for the everybody's birthday party, we had a great time. Uh, we want to officially thank even online our, our celebrity judges, Carla Krepp, who's a professional cake decorator, was here. And, uh, and Chief Bobby Salem came in. He goes, I don't know how to judge cakes. And I said, who cares? You're here, and it's fun. And uh, Brett Householder helped us out. So thank you guys if you're watching us online. Thank you very much for all that stuff. Uh, and, uh, so, and, and there's leftovers. If you're in this space with us, there's leftover cake in the back, and you are welcome to have some. And Susie, I don't know where my wife is, but, um, oh, you already got stuff. I was going to ask you for help with the extra thing that you did yesterday at the end. What? <clears throat> She'll figure it out. We, we have brain power going working here. Um, what you did afterwards yesterday. But I'm going to make a couple of other announcements while we're talking about this. Um, Winterfest is going to be in two weeks. This is the last week you can sign up if you're in junior or senior high school or post high 18 to 22 year olds. Oh, I thought somebody said something to me. Over there. Sorry, there's so much conversation going on uh, that, that I can hear it. And, uh, <laughs> I don't hear anything well. Um, uh, text updates. We have a thing in the bulletin here. We just started getting this going a little bit better. I promise that they're going to be sent out this week one way or the other. If glue doesn't do it, I'm sending them out myself like I started to this week. And, we're, and I confused some people. We are going to catch up on those after this week. We're going to go back and send the other ones out to build on what we have done already. Um, so to go to, oh, and if you want to go to hegetsus.com, hegetsus.com, you can get merchandise. If you go on there, you can pick out a couple of different items, and when you get to the end, your thing is you have to pick how you're going to pay it forward. It doesn't cost you anything financially, but it costs you working for the kingdom. So you can go get different apparel, hats, cake in the back table. There you go. Um, um, so there's all types of stuff. Uh, that way you can get. There's a slide up here for a beautiful lady that's an insert here, Grandma Donna. Grandma Donna used to be part of her church fellowship. Uh, she is turning 90 years old here in a couple of weeks. How about it? And uh, Grandma Dawn is in a, uh, she, you know, she. some of you know she moved out with her children out into the middle of nowhere in Ohio and uh, in Norwalk. And uh, she's, she's living in an assisted care place right now. And she is turning 90 years of age. And if you look in your worship folder, there is um, an address you can send cards to. Uh, we'd love to overwhelm her with cards. How about it? I love her, so <laughs> took me back for just a second. Um, today is first Sunday communion. If you are uh, going to be receiving communion with us today, make sure that uh, you grab some stuff so that you can receive that in just a few moments. And then uh, two other real quick things, uh, three actually. We've got a thank you note from CJ and Tessa. They're going to be sharing with us next week. They're back from Georgia or in Florida and wherever they stopped on the way up to. We didn't stop in Georgia, but but they had a Samaritan's First mission trip and they just thanked the family for supporting them on their mission trip to Florida. They're still struggling with damage caused by Hurricane Ian. Um, we got to help multiple elderly couples who don't have the funds or the strength to make repairs on their houses or cut down fallen trees. Many were extremely grateful. Thank you for helping us with this trip, Tessa and CJ. So you can talk to them about stuff. And like I said, next week they're going to be giving a little bit of a report about what's happening to sharing our story. Speaking of Samaritan's Purse, I threw out a couple weeks ago. If anybody's interested, because God kind of laid on my heart to do a, um, a trip to Georgia with the hurricane relief and, or sorry, the uh, tornado damage down there in Griffin, Georgia. And uh, I called them this week and I said, hey, I've got a couple of people that are interested. 
I'd kind of like to go on the team. Can you take a guy that's gimpy that can't do the major work I'm used to doing? And they said, yes, we can work with people of all. So see me afterwards if you're interested in going on that trip uh, to Georgia. It's a physical labor thing, but come see me right after church today. And then finally, we got a call earlier this week, Codell and uh, I have been talking a little bit, and, and, and Pastor Rick Hamrick from the Youngsville Free Methodist Church called me and said, we're bringing a work team down. And I said, yeah, I know. He goes, no, we're bringing it down on the 8th, 9th, and 10th. Get ready. I said, uh, 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 okay. So they're coming in Thursday afternoon, and they're going to be here Thursday afternoon, Friday, and Saturday and leave sometime in the early, mid-afternoon. They're going to stay here on site, some of them. Some of them are going to drive in and out. They got they want to do work projects. So here's what I'm telling you this for, besides the fact we got to A, pray. B, if you're able, come in and help them. This isn't just them serving us. This is us work, them working together with us in the kingdom and what we're doing. So if you're able, come in in the evening, come in in the daytime, whatever. Come in and help them out. This is our space they're coming to help, right? And I know it's short notice, so nobody's going to beat you up. But, hey, if you can do it. And even if you can only come in and bless them and say, hey, thanks for being here. Um, and uh, if you want to bring some food in or talk to Tina and I, we're going to try to put a few meals together, okay? Uh, we're going to fend for themselves. We even have a guy coming in. He might try to get the kitchen ready so that they might be able to heat stuff up in there uh, before they get here. So isn't that exciting stuff, though? Finally, one of these work teams is coming down, and they're going to be here, and they're pushing us to get stuff done. The wall, we're not going to have the permits together for this wall to go in, we don't think. We might, but we don't think. But if that's not going to happen, we are going to have other things. Okay, that's been a whole bunch of announcements. So let's uh, quiet our hearts and hear the call to worship this morning. Here we seek to let out light break forth like the dawn. Here we come to call, trusting the Lord will answer. Let's try this again. We're not used to doing this responsive reading stuff. Start that over. Okay. Here we seek to let our light break forth like the dawn. Here we come to call, trusting the Lord will answer. Here we're welcome to cry for help, believing the Lord will respond. Here I am. We gathered, eager to gain courage, to do as God directs, to, to share our bread with the hungry. To bring the homeless poor into our homes, to provide clothing for those who are uncovered. As God's own beloved children, let us worship God in this time, in our actions toward the least of our brothers and sisters. been a while since we've sung this but let's sing together because God does have a place he's going to take us back to All right, 
I see a few people out there that know the motions to this. I see Ellery and Susie doing them over there. I see Mackenzie. So would a couple of you just not argue with me? Gina knows them too. Just come on up and lead. If anybody wants to learn the motions to the song, come on up. A couple of you, come on up, please. See if a couple of you come, it's not going to be as weird. Okay, so come up during the chorus. Here we go, or the verses. Here we go. Don't know God's place to hide. Did I get on the wrong verse? Don't know if you got a family, say to mom or dad. Don't know if you love it all, but I bet you wish you had. Go and go with me to my father's house. Go and go with me to my father's house. A big, big house with lots and lots of room. A big, big table. A big, big yard where we can play football. Big house, it's my father's house. Verse 3. All I know is big old house, room for everyone. All I know is lots of land where we can play and run. All I know is you need love, and I got a family. All I know is you're all alone, so why not come with me? Come and go with me to my father's house. Come and go with me to my father's house. A big, big house with lots and lots of room. A big, big table with lots and lots of room. A big, big yard where we can play football or soccer. A big, big house, it's my father's house. A big, big house with lots and lots. I don't know the motions, guys. you got to help me. A big, big table with lots and lots of food. A big, big yard where we can play football or soccer. A big, big house, it's my father's house. A big, big house. With lots and lots of food, a big, big table with lots and lots of food, a big, big yard where we can play football, a big, big house. It's my father's house. Whoa! Hey, man, isn't it good? God's got a big house. He's going to take us home to one day. Come on up. There was an old hymn called Mansion Over the Hilltop. It's basically the same thing, okay? Just, just in a different version. Here we go. Just a different generation. Different generation. <laughs> See, I got it right up here today. Codell didn't even have to help me out. I can still follow some simple instruction. So, our stewardship nugget today. This, then, is how you ought to regard us as servants of Christ and as those entrusted with the mysteries God has revealed. How it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. So I hope everybody had a good week. We had a few people celebrate a birthday yesterday. We had a cake with a gaga pin on it. And it won first place. It was incredible. So there's some cake back there. So make sure you try that out if you didn't have time yesterday. You know, we've got a team coming in. We're here. And the Lord continues to just open doors that we never saw that would be available for us to be a lighthouse in this area and uh, bring some hope and love and uh, just into the city and into our community. So as we bring in the uh, team, you know, be praying for their safe travel and uh, that the work gets done. And if you can stop by, stop by, because you never know what blessing you might get. So, with that, will the ushers please come forward? Precious Heavenly Lord, we thank you for this day, Father, for the very breath we draw and all you've supplied us with, Father. And now, we humbly give a portion back to you, Lord. And we ask that you would bless it, Father, to life-changing ministry, and that hearts and minds and lives would be changed and welcomed into your kingdom, Father. For each family here, Father, and those online and all our sister churches and in our community, Father, we just pray that you would just allow us to come together 
mightily, Lord, in this time, Father, and we would be able to accomplish your work here in Newcastle, we pray. And we ask you to bless this service and be with us this day. Amen. So as we do stewardship time, one of the things we love to do is stewardship of people. And we had a couple of, we had that cake and stuff yesterday like, like we talked about. And there were a couple people not here because it was their birthday. And they had other plans and went landed on their birthday. But you know what? We had some extra cakes. So that's my cue for my wife or somebody that she has helping me. Um, I know she's in the nursery. Somebody's going to help me out here. So I need Jeremiah and Jacob because they both had birthdays this past week. So would you come up and receive a cake from us? Come on. I know they're going to be mad at me because they're like, dude, I don't want to do this. Oh, well, we love you. Suck it up. You know, so. So that's the wrong song. We're going to sing happy birthday to them. I know it was everybody's birthday yesterday, but we're just, and is that an uniced one? It's iced? It just looks like. Oh, it's chocolate on chocolate. It's my wife's doing. Okay. So, <laughs> anyways, let's um, let's sing Happy Birthday. Which one? Which name wants to go first? Okay, I'm gonna go alphabetical. Jacob and then Jeremiah. Okay. So, Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday, dear Jacob and Jeremiah. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Thank you guys for sharing your birthday and your cake with us. Have a great time. You know, since they couldn't be here to sing to yesterday, we had to sing to them today. Which birthday was yesterday? Jacob's. Okay. And then Jeremiah's was a few days earlier in the week. Okay. And the rest of you, just in case I miss it during the year, happy birthday. You're welcome. There we go. Let's, let's continue in worship with singing some praise and worship to the Lord our God. Lay your head down tonight, take your rest from the fight, don't try to figure it out. Just listen to what I'm whispering to your heart. Because I know this is not anything like you thought. The story of how your life was going to be. And it feels like the end has started closing in on you. But it's just not true. There's so much of the story that's still yet to come. And this is going to be glorious unfolding. Just you wait and see, and you will be a friend. You just got to believe the story is so far from home. Just you wait and see as 
singing song to our Savior and King. Live as remember, this life we're living is just the beginning of the beginning of this glorious unfolding. We will watch and see and we will be in a man. We just keep on believing the story is so far from home. this glorious unfolding as we go in deeper <sighs> draw us close as we sing and praise you in Christ alone found and he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground firm through the fiercest drought and storm what heights of love what depths of peace when fears are still when striving cease my comforter the love of Christ I stand mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in Christ alone who took on faith fullness of God in helpless faith this gift of love Yeah. 
Father, as we come before you in this time, as we take some next steps and do what you have instituted for us to do. May we not leave these songs like we've checked off a checklist, but may we live where they are. There is a glorious unfolding. There is you and you alone that saved us. Be with us, we ask and pray in your precious name, God. Amen. So this morning, we're going to receive communion. As I learned from a previous pastor a while back, we don't take communion. You don't take a gift. You receive a gift or you don't. So this morning, if you choose, we will be receiving communion. As the scripture tells us, it is nothing to be entered into lightly. We're supposed to check our hearts before we come to the throne. This remembers the sacrifice that Jesus gave so that we could be made clear and whole. And if we know Jesus, this is for us to do. We practice in our tradition, we practice what we call an open table. If your heart is clear before the Lord, you are welcome to receive, and I will caution you, make sure your heart is clear before the Lord. Don't try to hold anything back. God sees and knows your heart. The scripture is pretty plain, and we don't like to talk about this in our common culture and our world, but it says if you come to the table in an unworthy manner, some of you get sick and go to sleep, and he ain't talking about regular sleep. We don't like talking about that with a fluffy Jesus. But the God of the New Testament and the God of the Old Testament are the same God. Redemption has been brought for us and bought for us. So how do we get our hearts clean, receive Christ into your heart? And if you've been walking with Jesus, just ask him to forgive you your sins and say, God, I'm not sure. I feel like there's something there. Mm. Show it to me so I can confess it before you. And then do that. And I always tell this to, to our congregation as, as many times as I do this. If you've got an issue with somebody else and you know God wants you to make it right, go make it right. If they're in this space right now, just say, I love you. I'm sorry. We'll deal with it later, but I want to go into communion with a clear conscience. If you need to send a text or you need to call somebody, mess with their heads, go call them up and say, hey, I'm going to receive communion. I just got to get this right with you. I forgive you or I apologize to you. I've been holding a grudge, whatever. I'll talk to you later. Bye and hang up. That'll mess with them. They won't know what's going on. But your heart can be clear. And you know what happened is later on they're going to go, what in the world? And you're going to say, let me tell you what Jesus did for me today. Let me tell you what Jesus did today. So let's take a moment and breathe deep and ask the Lord to give us a clear heart and conscience before we receive. Lord God, as we come before you, as we have sung songs of praise, even our praise is muted when we're not coming and clear. So, Father, as we have sung and we've been getting our lungs moving and our feet moving and our bodies moving, Father, help us to think clearly. And I confess the sins that I have in my heart and the grudge that I've been holding. Father, I can give that to you again that it does not come back. If there is sin, if, Lord, I confess that to you. Speak to each one of us. And if our hearts are clear, praise God. Thank you, Jesus, for always loving me. Speak to us, Holy Spirit.
Jesus and his disciples were gathered for Passover. They had all those elements, and in a few months we're going to be talking about that and looking at that. And Jesus took one of the elements that were common to the table. He picked up a piece of bread. What I've read and have been taught is that it was probably matzah bread, which just like these little pieces of bread that we have, have holes in them. They were pierced, just like he was going to be. It wasn't a mistake that he picked up the unleavened matzah that was rolled and pierced. And he said, this is my body which is given for you. And he gave thanks to his father. And he said, this is my body given for you. And he broke it. And he gave it to them. He said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And in a like manner, he took the cup or the bowl depending on what your translation reads. He said, this is the blood of the new covenant, shed for the remission of sins. Take and drink. And as often as you drink of this cup and eat of this bread, remember that this sacrifice was done so you and I could have eternal life together. And as the Lord lays on my heart so often, he was sitting with people he had just spent a lot of time with the last few years. I imagine he looked at him and he knew what he was about to face. The Bible doesn't say if you record it or not, but I can only imagine that Jesus might have thought something or said, don't take this lightly. This is going to cost me a lot. I'm going to go through a lot for you tonight. Don't come to this table lightly. Because I don't go lightly. Father, as we come before you, we ask that you would consecrate these elements of, of juice and of bread. Lord, that they would do what only you can do with them. We set them apart for a special purpose this morning. <sighs> Asking your blessing on them so that we can come and be deeper closed, closed with you. I don't know how you do it, but I know when we do these steps of faith, you do things that my brain can't handle. So we ask that you would do that today, Father. Bless these things as we receive in faith in Jesus' name. Amen. So this morning, we're going to do something that we do sometimes, always trying to keep it fresh. There are cups and there is bread here on the table. I want you to come. Whenever you so choose, we're going to give a few minutes. And I want you to serve each other. And sometimes what happens is we get one or two great people with servants' hearts, and they serve everybody the juice. And that's good. That's wonderful that we have that. If you come up with a few people today, whether it's people at your table or whatever, take time and just serve each other. Now, if somebody needs help, by golly, help them. That's, don't hear what I'm not saying. Okay? But serve each other. Because Jesus gave these elements to the apostles and said, distribute these among yourselves. And he washed their feet and he said, do the same thing. Serve one another. So today, come and serve and receive.